Notice is hereby given of the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Town of Westfield in the County of Union, New Jersey at 7 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, May 9, 2017 at Franklin Elementary School, 700 Prospect Street, Westfield, New Jersey. The purpose of the meeting is to transact the regular business of the board and any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to instruct that it be recorded in the minutes that in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act, the Westfield School Board on Thursday, May 4th, 2017, caused to, be posted, caused to be posted at the Office of the Board of Education located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield Leader, the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield, Tap into Westfield, and Patch.com, a meeting notice setting forth the time, date, and location of this meeting. Dana, can we have a roll call, please? Mike Beelan. Mark Friedman. Brendan Galligan. Robert Garrison. Chris Langhart. Here. Gretchen Oleg. Here. Peggy Oster. Here. Charles Ostroff. Amy Root. Here. Chris, would you lead us in the flag salute, please? Yes. Please join me in our salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. So we are very pleased to begin our meeting tonight with a special tribute honoring the profession of teaching. And at this point, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our superintendent, Dr. Dolan. Thank you. This is absolutely one of my favorite nights of the year. Our elementary teachers are the ones who build the foundation for the learning for all of our students. Their influence on a child's education and self-worth cannot be underestimated. This year, we are celebrating the exceptional influence of a Franklin third grade teacher, Penny O'Donnell. <laughs> Mrs. O'Donnell is the 2017 recipient of the Westfield Rotary Club's Phil Hauer Fellowship Award in recognition of outstanding teaching at the elementary school level. We all are here to congratulate Mrs. O'Donnell and I'd also like to congratulate Franklin's principal, Dr. Cambria, for fostering outstanding teaching. And with that, <laughs> and with that, I'd like to um, invite Dr. Cambria to the podium to begin the celebration. Well, thank you, Dr. Dolan, Ms. Oleg, and members of the Board of Education, and welcome Franklin students, Franklin former students, teachers, parents, Former parents, it is with such great pleasure that we gather to honor Penny O'Donnell as the Phil Hauer Award winner for the Elementary Teacher of the Year. We are so proud of you, Penny. <laughs> Mrs. O'Donnell came to Westfield 18 years ago, in, and in that time, she has grown to be the type of teacher that we all want our kids to have the type of teacher that colleagues want to work beside, the type of teacher kids can rely on, and the type of teacher who is a principal's dream. While some of you may not know Mrs. O'Donnell personally, you may have seen evidence of how she celebrates the successes of her students. Have you ever seen a yard, yard sign in your neighborhood that lets the whole neighborhood know that someone in the house has memorized all of their multiplication facts. That's Mrs. O'Donnell's hard work. Mrs. O'Donnell makes every child feel special, safe, loved, supported, challenged. She has inspired her students to not only know their math facts, but to be able to break down complex math problems and to arrive at logical conclusions. In her care, children develop a love of reading, and she shows them that writing is not a chore, but an avenue to communicate and express ideas, beliefs, dreams. And as one parent wrote, Mrs. O'Donnell gave my son a road map that applied to any type of writing he encountered, and that took away the anxiety of staring at a blank page. No conversation about Penny can be complete without mentioning her classroom themes. 
every summer I look forward to seeing what Penny's classroom theme will be as she completely transforms her room. This year it was a circus theme, last year it was dogs. But I think my favorite year was the beach theme year when she added those Adirondack chairs to the classroom. Penny is always thinking about her students, and as I told them this afternoon, yes, when she's driving to school, when she's having dinner with her family, when she's shampooing her hair, she's always thinking of a way to engage you and to make learning fun. When evaluating a teacher's lesson, we always look for that hook, that part of the lesson that grabs the learner's attention and makes them want to learn more. Mrs. O'Donnell's students are hooked from the moment they enter her classroom in September. Beyond the classroom, Mrs. O'Donnell is the first to volunteer on any school-wide committee. She is a leader on our character education committee. Penny doesn't just come up with great ideas to promote positive school climate. She rolls up her sleeves, gets out her paints or her glue gun, and gets to work planning activities that promote kindness, caring, respect, and responsibility. Who but Penny could make a model of a brain out of colored t-shirts to demonstrate a growth mindset? We have a lovely uh, display in the hall if you'd like to see Penny's t-shirt brain. <laughs> the spirit of Penny O'Donnell is present in every new teacher at Franklin School. As Penny takes them all under her wing to teach them the ins and outs of Franklin School. She shares her creativity, insights into children, and best practices into teaching and learning. While we are proud of our rigorous school curriculum, we recognize the importance of teaching the whole child. Mrs. O'Donnell works to understand and motivate each of her students. As another mom wrote, she picked up on the nuances of my daughter. What inspired her? What motivated her? with a game plan and a strategy and a genuine energy that in turn inspired me. I'm watching my daughter learn at a pace and with a confidence that truly does show that it is possible to push without stressing, to inspire through teaching and to challenge each child to thrive while fostering creativity along the way. I want to express my gratitude to the Rotary Club and to the board for taking the time to call attention and to celebrate the work of a teacher. I am grateful every day that we have teachers like Penny O'Donnell. I know the Rotary Club had a flood of letters on behalf of Mrs. O'Donnell. We've pulled some quotes that we have hanging here, but um, one of our parents, Mrs. Dana Richter, is going to speak about Mrs. O'Donnell. It's a rare gift when a person comes into your life and makes such a profound and long-lasting difference, not only on your kids, but on their parents as well. Today, that gift I am referencing is Mrs. O'Donnell. Penny O'Donnell is the ultimate gold standard of teachers, a role model to whom other teachers aspire to emulate, and a simply wonderful person, friend, and confidant. For those of you who may not know, my name is Dana Richter, and I've been a parent here at Franklin School since 2009, and I will be here until my last child leaves in 2019. <laughs> During this time, my three kids have had the privilege of having so many wonderful teachers who I've come to know and greatly appreciate for their contribution to my children's lives. Through my tenure with the PTO, I was also able to meet so many more of the talented teachers here besides the ones who taught my children. I can say from firsthand experience that there are many award-winning, worthy teachers at Franklin. But tonight, I am truly honored to have been asked to talk about one in particular, Mrs. O'Donnell, and her receipt of the Charles Philhauer Fellowship Award. I admit the only obstacle I faced with doing this speech was how I was going to limit my comments about someone with such a limitless number of tremendous qualities. I will do my best to summarize as briefly as possible so we can get to the cookies. 
Mrs. O'Donnell perfectly embodies the spirit of the Phil Hauer Fellowship Award through her outstanding teaching, her dedicated interest in children and their parents, and her continued pursuit of professional growth as an educator. Prior to even meeting Mrs. O'Donnell, her reputation preceded her as a kind and strong teacher who cared about her students, yet who also pushed them to the limits of their individual abilities. Mrs. O'Donnell's commitment to teaching each year begins right in her actual classroom, as you heard from Dr. Cambria, before she even meets any of her new students. Each year, she transforms her classroom into a theme and winds this theme into all of her learning centers. When her new students enter the room for the first time, they don't, no doubt marvel at the palette of colors and the stimulating materials surrounding them, which all tie into the learning process. It is clear from the start how much time and effort she puts into creating an exciting, organized, and educational classroom for her new students each year. Under Mrs. O'Donnell's guidance, back in 2012, I watched my oldest son, Ryan, grow into a more mature, prepared, educated, and confident student. And he carries her teaching strategies with him to this day. I said I wouldn't point him out, but he's over there. <laughs> I am now watching my daughter, right here, transform into a more prepared, polished, and driven student as well. And my middle son, Tyler, while not having Mrs. O'Donnell, still benefited from her tutelage. Mrs. O'Donnell expects a lot from her students, but it is clear that her students thrive as they learn the importance of both structure and creativity. Her lessons involve the traditional subjects like math, reading, and science, but they also include other important life lessons, such as the necessity of being prepared and studying, diligently doing your homework, kindness to your fellow students, and following directions. Her commitment, I'm almost done. <laughs> her commitment to her students and to learning is further evidenced by the fact that she's almost always available before and after school to provide extra help to her students or counsel with their parents. It is obvious that Penny gets to know the children she teaches and learns their personalities, strengths, areas for improvement, sociability level, and continues to learn about them as the year progresses. It is comforting to know that when I send my daughter Kylie to school each day with Mrs. O'Donnell, I have a true partner in her personal, academic, and life development. The same held true about my son several years ago. One of the best things I can say about Mrs. O'Donnell is that she just gets it. While maybe not the most eloquent of words, they make the most sense. She understands each child she is teaching and somehow inspires in them a desire to do their best, whatever that child's best may be. She understands that teaching is not black and white and right and wrong, but oh so many shades in between. What works for one student may not work for another student, and that is okay with her, and she wants it to be okay with us, the parents. She is a calm and com comforting influence to parents. It is interesting to me that my most influential teacher in my life was my second grade elementary school teacher, Mrs. Audrey Eisler, with whom I have kept in touch with most of my life in some way or another. She instilled in me a desire to work hard, read a lot, and always do my best. I may not remember a lot about elementary school, but I do remember Mrs. Eisler's classroom, her teachings, and her lessons. I believe Mrs. O'Donnell will have a similar impact on so many students and their parents. I could go on and on, but in conclusion, Penny O'Donnell is simply a beautiful person, a beautiful educator, and she is one of a kind, and I hope you enjoy your special day. Thank you, Mrs. Richter. Now, several of our, it, I think all of our teachers really wanted to speak on your behalf, but we narrowed it down to just a few. Um, so we're going to start with Mrs. Dibble and Ms., then Mrs. Rigel. I feel, like, I feel like I have to stand up on this thing. This, I know, but I mean, if you want to hear me, I think I might, unless you bring that down. Much better, thank you. 
I only have a few things to say. I've been working with Penny for many years and I enjoy it tremendously and she helps me professionally and personally. So again, this is really short, it's big letters. Thank you, Penny, for being the person who casually shows me her completed bulletin boards and theme for next year, as I am just beginning to dream about my own for this year. <laughs> Thank you, Penny, for talking me off the ledge because of my crazy teenage sons or my decorating challenges. But most of all, thank you, Penny, for being such a wonderful friend. That's it. To all our guests here at Franklin School tonight, my name is Nancy Rigel, and I'm the achieved math teacher here at Franklin School. I wrote a letter about Mrs. O'Donnell for the award committee, and I was going to read you the letter, but I decided to just share with you what I discussed with our students this morning at the assembly, um, because I wanted to tell them why I wrote the letter and talk a little bit about one of my favorite topics, which is good character. Don't they look so nice and clean up here, and don't they all look like they have great character? I think so. Um, one thing I believe to be very important is showing gratitude. I think that when you look for chances to be thankful and show appreciation, you see the good in people and in the world. I wanted to thank the Rotary Club of Westfield for giving us a chance to show gratitude to a teacher by nominating them for this award. It forces us to think and reflect on someone has how someone has changed our life, and that act of reflection and demonstrating gratitude is truly important. I was so excited to get to do that, but I have to admit it was really hard. How could I possibly pick from one of the teachers here at Franklin School? It was a difficult choice about who I was going to pick and I really thought about it a lot. To me, all the teachers at Franklin School are amazing teachers who make our school an extra special place to work. But I decided to choose Mrs. O'Donnell. And really for me, it was about not only is she being a great teacher, but someone with amazing character. And that's what I want our students to take away from this. At Franklin School, we focus on character education and stressing those attributes that make someone a person of great character. Mrs. O'Donnell is a shining example of good character. For starters, Mrs. O'Donnell is kind. At our school, we have two buddy benches out on the playground. They're designed to give students a chance to invite someone to play when they don't have a friend at the moment. So many of our students are great about including others to play when they see them on there. Eight years ago, I started at Franklin School, and if we had a buddy bench in the teacher's lounge, I probably would have been on it, because I knew no one. <laughs> Mrs. O'Donnell took me out to lunch, introduced me to everybody, and got me on the right foot. And she does that for everybody. It's part of who she is. It was so kind of her to make me feel welcome, and I think it's one of the things that makes her so special. Mrs. O'Donnell also shows a lot of respect. I love that Mrs. O'Donnell respects me so much that she'll help me with anything I need, and she gives me honest feedback. She also shows a growth mindset. She believes we can all do great things if we work hard. She has helped me persevere through some difficult things and her positive thinking always encourages me. She respects others by expecting the best from them and helping them achieve it. Mrs. O'Donnell is a good citizen. Mrs. O'Donnell knows more knows how important our democratic process is, and she helped us all learn more about it during our election event here this year. For me, the red, white, and blue that was everywhere in this room and how excited our students were filled me with great pride to be an American. Mrs. O'Donnell inspires the member of our school community to always try our best, and she pushes me to continue to have a growth mindset and see opportunity where others may see roadblocks. I am blessed to get to work with Mrs. O'Donnell every day but I think our whole school community is very lucky to have her as a model of good character at Franklin School. She shows others respect, chooses kindness, demonstrates good citizenship, and is very caring. I hope that with her example, our school community can all continue to work hard to be our best and make choices that show our good character traits. Congratulations, Mrs. O'Donnell, and thank you for giving us this opportunity to showcase an example of great character at Franklin School.
every teacher wanted to talk about Mrs. O'Donnell, but we have the dream team of the third grade, Mr. Pask, Mrs. Romano, Mrs. Sinamo, Mrs. Suler, and Mrs. Bone. Good evening, Dr. Dolan, Board of Education, students, colleagues, and friends, and Penny O'Donnell. We are so thrilled to be here and to work alongside Mrs. O'Donnell, and we wanted to share a memory that we have with Penny and tell you what that memory has taught us through working with her. So about five years ago, it was two or three days after school had ended, and I was at Michael's, the arts and crafts store, getting things for the camp that I work at. So I was picking up popsicle sticks and crayons, and I happened to bump into Penny with her husband, and she had a shopping cart full of stuff, and she was just kind of hiding it. And we were talking, and she kept kind of hiding it, and I was wondering what was going on. So I eventually, you know, curio curiosity got the better of me, and I asked her, and turns out that she was already buying things to start her theme for her September classroom. <laughs> and um, so I found it really amazing that on June 27th, when many of us teachers were planning for camp or resting at the beach, she was already beginning to plan for September 7th. Um, and that taught me to not procrastinate and to plan ahead. Uh, every day as I walk past Penny's classroom, I'm just amazed that her colorful materials, her bulletin boards, her anchor charts, but honestly, above all, just her willingness to help me. My class is right next to hers, and, and I do admire her for everything. Um, Penny is a leader in collaboration in our school. Typically, you'll see colleagues in her room during lunch or even after school, just really just asking for advice um, or doing a joint activity together. So tonight, Penny, I just wanted to say thank you and congratulations, and I'm just happy this is your Teacher of the Year Day and not your retirement, because I would really miss you. So I have the honor of working with Penny O'Donnell, and we all have the honor of having her in our school and in our lives. Um, she ha holds these high expectations for herself, for all of us at Franklin School, her students, um, for each person that she meets. And when you go into her classroom and you see, as you've heard, her themes and her lessons, she sculpts each lesson, each activity as an artist would. She puts her heart into everything. She thinks about the children and what would be fun for them, which it's pretty amazing being in her room. Um, she thinks about the parents and how it's going to um, transfer to what they're doing at home. She thinks everything through. And this path that she sets them on sets them up for life. Um, to, to work hard and to put effort in. So the thing that I think I've learned most from Penny is that you put your heart into it in everything that you do. So thank you for that. Hello. Um, one of the many things that come to my mind when I think of Penny is to not procrastinate. Um, one thing is when you think of getting to school early, you might think, oh, the teacher comes to school 15, 20 minutes before, she'll get her classroom set up. Not Penny. If you drive past Franklin School around 6.30 in the morning, you're gonna see the custodian's cars and Penny's car. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fueled by her Dunkin' Donuts, Penny arrives to school early to get a head start on prepping all of her activities designing her very creative bulletin boards and organizing her classroom, planning lessons. She's creative, passionate, she's dedicated, beyond hardworking, and those are just some words that everyone thinks of when they think of Penny. She puts countless hours in and out of the classroom, preparing so that her students can have the ultimate learning experience. Penny students are so lucky to have her as their teacher, you're very lucky, and we're very lucky to have her as our colleague. So Penny, congrats, you deserve it. Good evening, thank you for the chance to talk and commemorate Penny. Um, I'm really very blessed because I've known Penny not only as a colleague, I've gotten to work with her as a teacher, also as a parent with my daughter, and I'm truly blessed to count her among my friends. 
Um, recently, I heard a uh, Tim McGraw song called Humble and Kind, and yes, I'm a country fan. Uh, <laughs> she is very, very welcoming. She welcomes us into her classroom. She welcomes us into her home. She welcomes us everywhere. She also puts others first. She doesn't really think of herself first. If you ask for help, Penny's there. She always is just there to help everyone, and I know she helps you guys a lot, right? Um, she's willing to lend a hand everywhere and anywhere. Uh, if you ask for help, if she finds out you need help, she's there and she gives and she volunteers. She helps you, she leads by example, and always, um, sh I have to say, she's probably, when you walked in to, to honor her with this award, I bet a million dollars she stepped back and was surprised and shocked, and I can't think of anybody that deserves it more. So we also wrote a quick poem that we wanted to read to Penny, and it is titled, Ode to Penny. <clears throat> penny, oh penny, style and grace, each and every anchor chart brings beauty to just the right place. Your tireless effort and keen little eye makes the teacher next door want to cry. <laughs> From glue guns and paint to projects and themes, always including and collaborating as a team. So humble, so kind, calm, with these memories, your legacy will live forever. And as you look around this room at, the, at those that you have touched, remember, Penny, your time at Franklin means so much. Thank you. Imagine that, teachers writing a poem for you, Penny. <laughs> Well, this fine-looking group in front of you, they really wanted to dress up tonight, don't they look great? This is Mrs. O'Donnell's class. And this, this is their first Board of Education meeting. That's another reason they dressed up. So we're going to ask them to come up. Boys and girls, would you come on up here? And don't you need to write down? I'm so glad Mrs. Rigel was talking about gratitude because that's what the children want to do tonight. Mrs. O'Donnell is to thank you. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for always having a smile on your face when we walk in and when we leave for home until the next day begins. Thank you for never giving us big loads of homework. Thank you for always being right there when we need help and letting us do fun classwork. Thank you for sometimes helping me in the mornings before school. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for always being kind and thoughtful to me. I remember when you helped me when I had trouble with lighting. In Mrs. O'Donnell's class, I learned that Hades is not evil. His name means the unseen. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for helping me love to read and write by teaching all of the things you need to be a great writer. Thank you for also always making learning fun and very creative by letting us draw pictures. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for always being really funny and letting us do really fun things like watching movies and giving us the courage to do our work. Thank you for giving us fun projects to do and you make the year fun by adding a fun theme to the classroom. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for making our classroom and work fun. One example, she used themes every year. This year's theme was circus. Thank you for never giving us loads and loads of homework every night. 
I remember, or I meant, in Ms. O'Donnell's class, I learned how to write neater, how to do division, and how to do multiplication. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell. In your class, I learned to never give up and to always believe in myself. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell. In your class, I learned plenty of cool, interesting things like Native Americans, myths, how to write fun, detailed stories, and much, much more. You have taught me in an awesome way. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for being nice and kind, also amazing. You are this because you never give us an overload of homework. You give us fun assignments after tests. Um, in Mrs. O'Donnell's class, I learned a lot of things such as uh, how to multiply with big numbers and divide. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for making us laugh and having a very fun time when you let us play and when you made us smile, and you still continue to do that every day. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for making teaching fun. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell. I remember when you always say funny things that make us laugh. In Mrs. O'Donnell's class, I learned a lot, including math, writing, law, God's book, the doctors, and plays. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for always making really hard, annoying things awesome. For instance, <laughs> Park. You help make it fun for all of us. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell. In your class, I learned how to really add detail to my writing. You helped me in a funny way, pushing me to do my best, pushing me to do my best work. Thank you, Ms. O'Donnell, for being there for me when I need you and making learning fun for me and others. Thank you, for Ms. O'Donnell, be for being an amazing teacher. In Ms. O'Donnell's class, I learned to listen more and do better. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for always giving us fun worksheets, projects, and future plans. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell, for always being a very good teacher. You never yell at us when we do something wrong. <laughs> Thank you for being a loving friend you are not someone you're not. Thank you, Mrs. O'Donnell. In your class, I learned that no matter what you think, you should always try your best. They were awesome, and now um, our PTO um, would like to um, present you with flowers. So Mrs. O'Donnell, would you please come up? Mrs. Fister, thank you. First of all, boys and girls, you're all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <clears throat> good evening. I would like to thank everyone for sharing this special day with me. Although I will be eternally grateful for the amazing recognition I have received as a 2017 recipient of the Phil Hauer Fellow, I feel compelled to celebrate teachers across the world. A retired teacher named Janine Escalier Cato explained, Great teachers recognize that what they do is simply who they are. They understand that teaching is an extension of who they were meant to be. As so many high school and college students are faced with choosing majors and careers, I thought about the reasons why teachers matter. I came across an article published by the Varkey Foundation, a nonprofit organization established to improve the standards of education for underprivileged children throughout the world. In support of teachers, they listed the top 10 reasons, and I would love to share them with you. Teachers have the most important job in the world. They help underachievers fly and keep overachievers grounded. They listen, coach, and mentor. They make the mundane extraordinary. They simplify the complex. They help us reveal our skills. 
They teach us life skills. They are quiet heroes. They educate us. They inspire us. There was one word in this list that stood out, the word inspire. The only problem is that I think they have it backwards. It is not just the teacher who inspires her students. It is the students who inspires their teachers. Children offer us the wonderful opportunity to be the best we can be, to share stories and knowledge, to help them uncover their own talents and passions, and to awaken their curiosity so they can successfully problem solve as they navigate through life. It is a difficult job. There is not a teacher presently working or retired that would, not dis that would disagree with that opinion. Teaching is also one of the most rewarding professions anyone can choose. What better reward than observing a child raise the bar higher than they thought they could reach, discover new friendships, or pick themselves up and try again when it didn't work the first time. More times than I can count, I have run into prior students who, prof who proudly shared their accomplishments and plans for the future. That is when you smile to yourself and think, yes, I have made a difference. When Johanna Hayes, the 2016 National, National Teacher of the Year, addressed the NEA Representative Assembly, she explained, Students should see their teachers as someone who cares about their academic success and their personal growth. Someone who cares about their families and their communities. Someone who takes the time to learn their stories and understand their journeys. <coughs> my journey as a teacher began several years ago as my children were going quickly and I was contemplating a career change. With hands shaking and a lot of self-doubt, I interviewed with Dr. Dolan who was then the principal of Franklin School, for a position as a paraprofessional. As the daughter of a teacher, I believe it was destiny that brought me to this crossroad. The position gave me firsthand experience while I pursued my graduate degree in English and education. From that very first interview, I have been surrounded by people who mentored and supported me. I work with the most caring and dedicated teachers and administrators anyone could ask for. Each and every member of the staff at Franklin and throughout the district are professionals that I admire and adore. They are not just colleagues and bosses. They are cheerleaders, advisors, counselors, and friends. I would like to personally thank the Westfield Rotary Club and Westfield Board of Education for this humbling honor. Being recognized for my hard work and dedication to help educate the children in Westfield is something that I will always treasure. <clears throat> to Dr. Dolan, Dr. Cambria, Mr. Lipson, thank you for letting me be the teacher I dreamed about. Whether it is turning my classroom into a circus, having 600 students vote for President of the United States, or pushing the students beyond their comfort zone, you held my hand, gave me a little nudge, and put me back together whenever I needed. To my family, thank you for listening to the endless stories about my students, giving up the dining room table so that I could create reading workshop posters, <laughs> keeping me focused when I felt less than adequate as a teacher, and understanding that teaching is my passion and love. To the Franklin parents, thank you for sharing your children and giving me the privilege of being their teacher. To my students, past and present, you are the best part of being a teacher. For my last thank you, and there's no, no we're not going to, I would like to ask all the Franklin teachers to please come join me up here right now. <laughs> this award is not just for me. This award belongs to all of us because you are all a part of me. You inspire me not only because you are excellent teachers, but because you are the kindest and, and most caring people on the face of the earth. It is a joy to consider you my friends. 
We have been given a huge responsibility, and I know it is not one we take lightly. Our students are the future, and what better job than helping them to pave their own path in history? Thank you. <laughs> Tonight, I have the pleasure, on behalf of the Board of Education, to present Mrs. O'Donnell with this resolution. I'd like to first say that I also have the pleasure of being a parent in Mrs. O'Donnell's first fourth grade class here at Franklin School. She survived, my son survived, and it's all history. <laughs> resolution by the Board of Education Westfield, New Jersey, to Penny O'Donnell, Rotary Club of Westfield, 2017, Philhauer Fellow. Whereas Charles Philhauer distinguished himself as an outstanding educator during 30 years of service as Westfield Superintendent of Schools from 1917 to 1949, helping establish Westfield as a premier school district in the state of New Jersey, and whereas the Rotary Club of Westfield has established a fellowship in memory of Charles Philhauer, co-founder and past president of the Rotary Club. And whereas this memorial is a fitting tribute to the importance of teaching in the elementary grades and the nobility of the teaching profession. And whereas Penny O'Donnell, a third grade teacher at Franklin Elementary School, who has been serving Westfield elementary students since 2000, has been awarded the 25th Annual Philhauer Fellowship for Outstanding Teaching, Interest in Children, and Continued Pursuit of Professional Growth. And whereas Penny O'Donnell is commended for her excellent teaching strategies and for her creative energy, inspiration, dedication, and commitment to the children and families of Westfield, particularly by instilling confidence in her students and making each one feel special. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this Board of Education publicly express appreciation to the Rotary Club for establishing this award, and that this Board of Education sincerely congratulates Penny O'Donnell for being named the 2017 Charles Philhauer Fellow, a significant honor and a notable accomplishment and that this resolution be presented to Penny O'Donnell on May 9, 2017, and that a copy of this formal resolution becomes part of the permanent records of this Board of Education. Congratulations. With this many people here, it definitely shows how much everybody loves Mrs. O'Donnell. So on, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank Franklin School for hosting our meeting this evening. Now we'll take a short break, and I think that there are some great cookies and drinks out in the hallway. All right, we're going to move forward with the remainder of our meeting. Everyone's welcome, of course, to stay, although we can't possibly match the excitement. <laughs> Um, we'll continue on with announcements. Amy, do you have any announcements? Make sure you speak. Sorry, to me. there we go. Thank you. Um, uh, two from the high school. They're rather lengthy, but I'll do my best here. Um, the first is congratulations to the Westfield High School youth and government students who returned from the April 21st through 23rd annual New Jersey conference in Trenton with several recognitions, including the Outstanding Delegation Award. A total of 36 Westfield High School students were among more than 400, representing approximately 25 New Jersey high schools. Individual recognitions included, freshman Andrew Capadia was named the outstanding first-year delegate, 
Sophomore Nicholas Guerrero earned the Outstanding Delegate Award, and senior Samantha Delaferra was selected as the Outstanding Lobbyist. Seniors Rafael Alaitamaki and Ben Halivi served as YAG officers and helped to organize and run the conference. Senior Juliana Yang served as the WHS Youth Secretariat and helped with organizing and disseminating information about the conference. Westfield High School students also were chosen to participate in future leadership roles in the state and in the nation. Sophomore Austin Chen was elected to an officer position at next year's New Jersey Conference. Austin Chen, Ben Halivi, and Claudia Doherty were selected to attend the Conference on National Affairs in North Carolina this July. Justin Joseph and Molly Whitehead were selected as alternates for the program. Long-term, long-time, sorry, advisors for Westfield High School YAG are social studies teacher Daniel Farabaugh and English teacher David Delafera. Uh, no relation, I believe. Um, I hereby nominate Amy to do all the announcements with students' names from now on. <laughs> well, thank you. I said I would do my best. So, um, okay. And the second announcement for the high school is that all parents and educators in Westfield and surrounding areas are invited to attend Getting High Naturally, a positive science-based and practical approach to substance abuse prevention. This free workshop will be held Monday, May 15th, from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Westfield High School Auditorium. The program will focus on how parents, educators, and students can help foster skills in a supporting environment without arguing. Specifically, it will present techniques such as effective communication, mindfulness, meditation, and using natural highs as healthy coping mechanisms against stress, alcohol, and other drug use and bullying behavior. Matt Belace, PhD, a motivational speaker, author, comedian, and specialist in clinical neuropsychology, that's a background, uh, will lead the workshop. His How to Get High Naturally program, which will be presented to Westfield High School students during daytime assemblies on May 15th, encourages healthy choices. Dr. Belace uses humor and a non-judgmental approach to convey neuroscience research that supports choosing healthy natural highs over chemical highs like alcohol. The event is sponsored by the Westfield High School Dream Team, Westfield Municipal Alliance, Prevention Links, Westfield Parent Teacher Council, Westfield High School, and the Westfield School District. For more information, contact Louise Dedea at lngdedea at hotmail.com. Fun. Thank you. Chris. Yes, one announcement. Uh, it's a district announcement. The public is invited to attend the 33rd annual Westfield Public School District Art Show, which will be held in the Westfield High School Varsity Gymnasium from May 16th to the 18th at 550 Dorian Road. A sampling of hundreds of artwork created by students representing all 10 public schools and grades ranging from kindergarten through 12th will be on display. On Tuesday, May 16th and Wednesday, May, 7th, Wednesday, May 17th, the artwork can be viewed from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Visitors are also welcomed on Thursday, May 18th from 9 to 2. Admission is free, so please take advantage of that. Thanks, Chris. Michael, do you have? Yes, I do. Uh, congratulations to Edison Intermediate School students who were accepted to perform at the All-State Intermediate Orchestra. The, the Westfield musicians who will perform on Saturday, May 13th at 3 p.m. at Summit High School include Kevin Chen, Amy Zhao, Kelly Egan and Dylan McCann. And uh, second, uh, the Westfield Community Service Club will be holding a dance marathon for all students, parents, and staff on May 19th from 5 to 10 p.m. to raise money for Children's Specialized Hospital in Mountainside. For more information, please email the Westfield Community Service Club advisor, Warren Hines, at whines at westfieldnjk12.org, and that's w-h-y-n-e-s at westfieldnj.org. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Charles? No? Brenda? Congratulations to Westfield High School baseball coach Bob Brewster, who registered his 600th career win on April 27th with a 1-0 victory over Cranford. A 1968 graduate of Westfield High School, Mr. Brewster was a catcher for the Blue Devils, and his father, Bob Sr., was a longtime coach in Westfield, and our baseball field is named in his honor. Thank you. Peggy. Um, the Westfield High School bands, in collaboration with Edison Intermediate School and Roosevelt Intermediate School, <clears throat> will present their sixth annual Jazz Under the Stars on Saturday, May 13th beginning at 5 p.m. in the courtyard of Westfield High School, 550 Dorian Road. This event is open to the entire community and will feature performances by the Westfield High School Chorale and Choraleers, as well as jazz bands from Edison Intermediate School, 
Roosevelt East Intermediate School, and Westfield High School. The program for the evening has been designed to appeal to listeners of all ages and consists of classic jazz standards, as well as newer charts by modern jazz composers. A casual jazz club atmosphere will be set in the Westfield High School courtyard for this special evening. Tickets are $7 at the door. It is advised that patrons bring lawn chairs for comfortable outdoor seating. If rain is in the forecast, the event will be held at the same time, place, but in Cafeteria B in Westfield High School. For more information, please contact Chris Vitale, Director of Bands, at C-V-I-T-A-L-E, C Vitale, at westfieldnjk12.org. I have two announcements as well. The Westfield Board of Education candidates deadline is July 31st. That's the deadline for Westfield residents interested in considering a three-year term on the Board of Education. Uh, it's July 31st at 4 p.m. and petitions are then due to the county clerk's office in Elizabeth. The three members whose terms are expiring on the Westfield Board of Education include Peggy Oster, Mark Friedman, and Christopher Langhart. To consider becoming a Board of Education member for the 2017-2020 term, candidates must file a petition in person in the office of the County Clerk at 2 Broad Street, Room 113 in Elizabeth, on or before 4 p.m. on July 31, 2017. The actual election will take place on Tuesday, November 7, 2017. Nominating petition forms, which must be completed and submitted to the county clerk, are available at the Board of Education office, 302 Elm Street in Westfield, and on the board website. Questions regarding the election process can be referred to the Union County elect Election Supervisor, Lisa Hugelmeyer, at 908-527-4996. Information is also available at the county clerk's website at www.ucnj.org backslash county clerk, C-T-Y-C-L-E-R-K. Interested residents are encouraged to contact any member of the Westfield Board of Education or the Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Margaret Dolan, for more information about service on the board. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, May 23rd at 7.30 p.m. at 302 Elm Street, where we will honor the state and regional performing arts students. For a complete agenda of the meeting, please go on our website, and uh, that agenda will be posted on Friday, May 19th. Do you have any additional announcements? At this point, I'll recognize members of the public for agenda items only. Seeing no one come to the podium, I'd ask the board to approve the minutes of our board meeting held on April 25th, 2017, and the private minutes of the same date. Can I have a second? Amy, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Very good. Uh, we'll move on the agenda to personnel. In Mark's absence, I would ask the board to consider personnel items uh, 1 through 36. Number 36 is at your seats tonight. Uh, it's the addendum. Dr. Dolan, I think we have some resignations and some other announcements. Oh, second. can we have a second, please? Chris? Amy? Yes. Second. Sure. So I'll Amy, oh. thank you. Uh, Dr. Up. Dolan. <laughs> thank you. Actually, tonight, uh, before the board votes, there are two recommendations I'd like to speak to. Uh, the first one, uh, I'm very pleased to recommend Ms. Mabel Hoon for the, uh, for the position of assistant principal at Westfield High School. Ms. Hoon actually started in Westfield High School in 2003 as a chemistry teacher. And then this past August, she was willing to step up and become the, an acting assistant principal at the school. The high school, under the direction of Dr. Nelson, conducted a thorough search, and um, Mabel was able to set herself apart from the others based on her firsthand knowledge of the inner workings of Westfield High School. She was also able to showcase her ability to work with a multitude of stakeholders to produce positive outcomes for students. Again, I'm very pleased. Um, she's done a wonderful job this year at the high school, really helped the team at the high school, the administrative team, and I'm very pleased to recommend her um, this evening for the board's consideration. My second recommendation tonight that I'd like to speak to um, is for the new principal for Roosevelt Intermediate School, and I'm very happy to recommend Marius Fendis for that position. This position will come, become available on July 1st. Uh, with the retirement of Mr. Carey. Mr. Svendis has successfully served Westfield Public Schools in quite a number of roles, 
Currently, she is the assistant principal at Edison Intermediate School. She, before that, she served as the assistant principal of Westfield High School from 2012 to 2016. But her career in the Westfield Public Schools actually began as a middle school Spanish teacher in 1999, a position she held into 2004. Now, before she returned to Westfield as assistant principal at Westfield High School, Mrs. Espendis was the supervisor of world languages in the Bernards Township School District. In our interview process, our search committee, which included a parent, board member, teachers, administrators, myself, the director of human resources, no matter what the scenario was that we shared, no matter what the question was, Mrs. Espendis was thoughtful, she was prepared, her experience in the various ro roles showed, and I know that she will be capable of taking over our middle school that um, wonderfully educates over 750 students each and every day, so I'm very happy to recommend Mrs. Espendis as well. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Dolan? Anything else on the personnel agenda? Dana? Mike Dillon? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes, although I abstain from item nine. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Amy Root? Yes. So congratulations to Mabel and to Mary. We're thrilled, and um, I'd like to give you each a, a chance to, uh, to take the podium. Mabel, if, if you have something you want to say, please feel free. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Dolan, and thank you all once again for giving me this opportunity to serve Westfield as an assistant principal. I'd like to also thank the hiring committee and all who were involved for their valuable time and their contribution in the interview process. And many thanks to my husband and my son. Thank <laughs> you for your unconditional support so that I can focus on doing my job well. <laughs> Dr. Nelson, thank you for your leadership, your guidance, and your support. It is an honor to be working with you and alongside the entire administrative team. When I started teaching at West Hill High School 15 years ago as a chemistry teacher, I didn't think for a second that I would be serving West Hill as an assistant principal today. But that's how West Hill has an effect on everyone. It does not only educate students and support students so that they can be successful and be better, it also inspires and support and provide opportunities for staff to improve and grow. Okay. I treasure every moment at Westfield High School. I enjoy growing with my students. I enjoy improving with the staff and collaborating with all the parents. Always want to make sure our students are getting the best and become successful in their lives. I'm thrilled and I'm looking forward to many more years of working in partnership with everyone at Westfield High School. Uh, thank you very much for all your support. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dolan and the members of the Board of Education. As I was watching the presentation earlier, I thought what a great night to start, um, to start my career as a principal in this district. Um, it was wonderful to see the students and the celebration here. Um, and I'd just like to say I'm really honored to be chosen as the next principal of Roosevelt Intermediate School. A little over five years ago, I stood at a very similar podium <laughs> in Cafeteria A, feeling the similar emotions I'm feeling now. I felt pride, I felt gratitude, I felt excitement. I was accepting an assistant principal position at Westfield High School after I'd been in another district for eight years as a supervisor of world languages. I couldn't have imagined after, I, I'm excuse me, I couldn't have imagined when I began my career as a school administrator that my path would lead me back to this community that had been so formative in my beliefs and my philosophies of education. That night, I reflected on starting my career in Westfield as a middle school Spanish teacher. I was reminded of the wonderful colleagues who'd mentored me through those early teaching years. I also recalled many of those moments with students which helped me form my beliefs as a teacher. But most importantly, I was thrilled to be returning to a place that I was so proud to be a part of. Westfield is truly a unique school district. 
So as I start this new chapter in my career in Westfield, I look forward to building on the strong foundation already present at Roosevelt Intermediate School. I'm aware I have some big shoes to fill. For students to be successful, it takes a community approach. As principal, it will be my goal to foster that sense of community, to ensure that Roosevelt continues to be a wonderful middle school that nurtures the growth of students academically, socially, and emotionally. In conclusion, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to continue to contribute to the tradition of excellence at Westfield Public Schools. I look forward to working with the students, staff, and families of Roosevelt Intermediate to create a welcoming school community focused on student learning and celebrating the successes of all students. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm very grateful. Um, on behalf of the board, I just want to thank um, Dr. Dolan, Barbara Ball, uh, all the board members, faculty members, parents who joined in, in both of these search committees. And, and um, we're, like Mary, we're very excited and, uh, and, and we're grateful that you guys are here and look forward to the future. So thank you both. Facilities. Brendan, do you have any report? Uh, no report. Our next meeting is on the 16th of June. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Long-range planning, uh, Mark's not here. I wasn't aware of any report. No reports, Mark. No report. Policies, Chris. Uh, yep, uh, we have a policies meeting next Tuesday, and on the agenda tonight, we just have one item. I'd like the board to consider for approval uh, item number one on the agenda. Can I have a second? Uh, Brendan, second. thank you. I'd ask the board to affirm the superintend superintendent's decision on HIV incidents 17HSO6, 17HSO7, 17E13 and 17E14 for the reasons set forth in those reports. Yes. Yes. Chris Leinhart. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Peggy Astor. Yes. Charles Astroff. Yes. Amy Root. Yes. Nothing further. Great. Curriculum, I would like to ask the board to consider items one and two that are on the agenda tonight. Can I have a second, please? Charles, thank you. Um, the first item is the district field trips, which were attached as a part of the agenda. The second item are the second reading of the curricula that we, uh, we introduced at the last meeting. Does anybody have any questions? Dana? Mike Phelan? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Gretchen Oldig? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Astroff? Yes. Amy Root? Yes. Nothing further. I'm not aware off the top of my head when the next meeting is, but we do have another one coming up. Paul, do you know? I don't want to make you guess. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. It's, it's nice. in the blue notes. I think it's How's next that? Friday. Next Friday. Um, finance. In Mark's absence, I'd like to ask the board to consider finance items one through five. Second. Mm -hmm. Chris, thank you for a second. Dana, is there anything that we need to call out? Um, no, we're rewarding a contract there for um, roof replacement. Um, this is additional roof work that we're doing at Wilson School um, with bond referendum money that we still have uh, available to us. Great. Any questions? Dana. Mike Beelan? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Gretchen Oleg? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Astroff? Yes. Amy Root? Yes. Uh, thank you, technology. Peggy, any report? Um, I'm just going to read a couple notes here, and if any of you, I was not able to attend the meeting. I had a personal issue, um, but the meeting was held on Friday, April 28th, um, and it followed up after Paul and his team spoke at the board meeting. So at the technology meeting, they talked a little bit more about the SAMR and the, its deployment within um, the district. Um, they also discussed a little bit about tech ed. Um, and the third thing they would discussed was um, the new website. So do you have, Charles, Michael, do you have anything to add from the meeting? I know you were there. I mean, one thing about the new website, we're currently using Edline as our platform for the website. Uh, we're looking to go and merge that with school, school wires and blackboard.net school wires bought uh, both Edline and Blackboard.net, so we're hopefully we'll get the benefits of both platforms uh, going forward. Okay. And our next meeting is Friday, May 19th. Great, thank you. I'd ask the board to note the notes for the record, and do we have any unfinished business we need to discuss tonight? Any new business? Liaison reports. Amy. Uh, 
Um, just, uh, I wasn't able to go to the special ed parents uh, planning meeting that was held a couple weeks ago, but um, would like to make a small plug for uh, their meeting, which is next Wednesday, May 17th at Edison School. There's gonna be a presentation called 2E, The Myth of the Lazy Gifted Student. It's about the concept of kids who are considered twice exceptional. So um, both um, receiving some form of special education, but also gifted at the same time. So it's an interesting um, topic that a lot of people might not be aware of. As always, their meetings are open to the public. Um, there's a business, um, they do committee business at seven, and then the presentation starts at 7.30. And the presenter is Jackie Byrne, who's the head of the Flex, <coughs> Flex School um, that operates out of Ivy Ed in uh, Fanwood. Um, she's a pretty exceptional person. So, so. Um, so anyway, I wish I could go. It's the same night as the Boosters dinner for seniors. So mm -hmm. I won't be able to make that either, but I'm pressing for notes. Excellent, so, thank you. <laughs> Any other liaison reports? No. I was at the uh, Edison PTSO meeting a couple weeks ago, and they are going to be holding a, oh, looking to bring to the facilities committee about a fundraiser for getting air conditioning within Edison Intermediate School. So that'll be addressed uh, on the agenda for the next facilities meeting. Right, we did add that to the agenda for the next meeting and we'll, we'll have a conversation about it. Thank you. Anything else? Anyone from the public uh, with any questions or comments? Seeing no one come, I'd ask the board to approve the following resolution. Resolve that the Board of Education move into private session for the purpose of discussing matters rendered confidential by state and federal law, contract negotiations and harassment, intimidation and bullying incidents, and be it further resolved that any discussion held by the board which need not remain confidential and the results of the discussion will be made public as soon as practicable. Can I have a second, please? Amy, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in private. Thank you very much.